So, hello guys and welcome to a new series. So, I know that in form, this is just a continuation of our present value episodes. But in fact, it is really a new series. So, for this new series, we are going to talk about the following. So, number one, we have the accounting for loans payable. And then number two, we will have the debt restructuring topic. And number three, we're also going to talk about the loans receivable account. And lastly, the impairment of loans receivable. But for today's video, we're going to focus on the accounting for loans payable. Okay? But before we start this, please see first the episode 1 to 14 to be able to relate and master the accounting for loans and debt restructuring. So you have options. You can go to my channel and then select the playlist titled Accounting for Notes, Loans and Bonds or you can go to the description below because their links are available in the description. So now, let's start the video after this short intro. So, Loans Payable Accounting well, here's what we are going to do. So, in this video, we're going to enumerate all the possible questions in this topic. And we will group them according to map. So, again, the map is measurement questions. A is for accounting and recording questions. And P is for presentation questions. And if you can't relate to this map, please see the previous video. Okay? But... In order for you to have a complete knowledge in this topic, loans payable accounting, aside from enumerating the questions, we will try to answer these questions by solving an illustrative problem. Okay? Again, the flow is, we are going to enumerate all the possible questions in the loans payable accounting. And then, we will try to answer those questions based on the illustrative problem that I'm going to give you later. So for now, let's have the sample problem first. So, BBG Incorporated availed a loan from BBM Bank. So BBG received proceeds of 4,657,835. The loan principal to be paid is 5 million. But there is a twist here. The 5 million principal is to be paid on installments of 1 million every end of the year for five years so that's the twist and another interest to be paid is 10 percent based on the outstanding balance of the principal so that's another twist this means that the interest to be paid every year is not the same it's because the principal every year will change because of this provision okay so lastly the effective rate for this loan transaction has already been computed at 13%. So that's the whole illustrative problem. And as you can see, everything is given. The term is here. The principal is also here. The nominal rate and the proceeds is also given, which is already the initial present value of the loans payable. And most importantly, the effective rate is also given. Again, this is already the whole illustrative problem. But before we go and answer all the possible questions that might be asked for this problem, we need a deeper analysis for this problem. Okay? So, let's analyze this deeper. Number one that I need to mention is that there are deductions made by the creditor PBM Bank here in this problem. Evidence? The principal is very much different from the proceeds. The proceeds is only 4.6 million plus, while the principal is 5 million. So to be exact, there is a difference of exactly 342,165. Okay? So additional knowledge. This difference where the proceeds are lower than the principal is what do we call as a discount. And you need to remember that. So, you will understand why you need to remember that as we go further on the topic, okay? So, moving forward, 
we can say that this loan transaction here is made at a discount of again 342,165. So that's the first that I need to mention in this deeper analysis. So number two in this deeper analysis that I need to mention is pertaining to the pattern and the amount of payments every year. So let's start with the principal. It was said here that the principal is to be paid on installments every year of 1 million. So let's put that here. Okay. Now, interest of 10% on the other hand is based on the outstanding balance of the principal. So it means in the first year, the 10% will be based on the 5 million principal. But on the second year, it's already based on 4 million. And the 10% will be based on 3 million on the third year, 2 million on the fourth year, and 1 million on the fifth year. Now, because of that, yearly payments will be this, which is, as you observed, is not uniform. Okay? So that's the deeper analysis for the given sample problem. Okay? Now, let's go to the next step before enumerating and answering all the possible questions based on this problem. Okay? Maybe some of you will say, Sir, you already said that a couple of times already. I know. But we will get there. I promise. So, let's have all the possible questions in accounting for loans payable account. Okay? So let's start with measurement related questions. But first, let's have the previous slide as the guide, okay? Now, before I enumerate the measurement related questions, I would like to tell you that my solution to answer measurement related questions involves making a timeline and completing the timeline, of course. So this is not new to you at all. Because we have been doing this in the previous episodes, right? Now, the reason why I do this is because most of the measurement-related questions can be answered by my timeline technique. And you will see that later. Okay? Of course, the other authors of books are not using the timeline technique. Instead, they are using tables. So, in the next episode we are going to try to compare the timeline technique and the table technique. So, of course, my personal preference is the timeline technique. And I'm going to introduce that first. Okay? So, we have here the timeline. And these are the scheduled payments. Okay? Now, there is no need to get the present value because it was already given in the problem. Right? So, we just need to put it here. Of course, this will grow, right? And we are very fortunate enough because the effective rate was also given. So, we just need to complete this timeline. So, we have 4,657,835 times the first 1.13. And we will get 5,263,354. And minus the first payment of 1.5 million. And we will get a carrying value of 3,763,354. And times 1.13 equals 4,252,590. And then minus the second payment of 1.4 million. And we will get a carrying value of 2,852,590. And then times again 1.13. And we will have 3,223,426. And then minus 1.3 million. And we will get 1,923,426. And times again 1.13. And we will get. 2,173,471 and then minus 1.2 million and we will get 973,471 and then 
times 1.13 for the last time and we will have 1.1 million and 22 minus 1.1 and we will have 22 instead of 0. But then again, this might be due to rounding of factors used by the maker of this sample problem. And again, it's okay because 22 is very immaterial. So let's end the episode now to make this video short. So in the next episode, we will already start enumerating all the possible questions for accounting for loans payable. Okay? I promise. So stay tuned. So if you learn, please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And don't forget to select all to be updated on my next videos. So thank you for watching and see you on the next one.